tap on? Hey, wait a minute. Okay, I'll take her in my car. 14th hey, Street Station. your hat. Oh, thanks very much. Hey, what? <coughs> now we'll get this police station stuff off of mine. Go somewhere and have a bite to eat. Fine. you live? 121 Sherry Street. Oh, uh, say, uh, by the way, what is your name? Mary. Mary Smith. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't kid me. I'm not. That's my name. Mary Smith? Well, that's a, that's a very bad name for romance. But uh, we'll have to make it do, I guess. Why? Don't be silly. Huh? Okay, Oswald. Tut, tut, tut. Drunk again. Now, don't be silly. I'm not drunk. What, Buddy Hayes sober? Well, what is this world coming to? Huh? 89, two column, Oswald. Righto. 80 lines of two columns. Okay. One of these days, I'm going to buy that little paper of yours and throw it right in the ocean. And you along with it. Now, you hear that, would you, Buddy? Have you got any manners? Huh? Introduce me. What? Now listen, don't print my picture again. I wouldn't think of it. All right, Mr. Smith. Huh? Smith? Smith? Where have I heard that name before? I don't know. What's your name? Charlie Walker. Your age? 21. What's the charge? Purse snatching. He tried to grab this young lady's bag. What time? 6.30. All right, Tom. Take him away. What's your name, miss? Mary Smith. Mary Smith? Not Mary Smith. Yeah. Where do you live, Miss Smith? 117 East 42nd Street. All right. You'll be notified when you have to appear. What's your name, son? Huh? Oh, my. I'm surprised at you. Why, everybody knows Buddy Hayes. Are you Buddy Hayes? Yeah, that's me. Okay, Buddy. You'll be notified. May I go now? Yes, Miss Smith. I want to thank you again, Mr. Hayes. Oh. Well, now, now, you haven't forgotten our little dinner engagement. But I have a little... But, but, now you can tell me all about that later. See you in the picture section.
Don't touch anything. I wasn't born yesterday, Dan. Don't get fresh, scribe. You say that cat was found sitting on his chest, yowling? Uh, yes, sir. It was midnight. Midnight? I thought you said it was two o'clock in the morning. Uh, I did, sir. Midnight is the cat's name. Oh, I see. It was his cries that brought me downstairs, sir. You don't think the cat could have done it, do you? Oh, no, sir. Why, I, uh... Cut it, Scoop. This isn't a comedy. What time this girl arrived here last night? What girl? If you'd have gotten here on time, you'd know. Mary Smith. Mary Smith? Say, are you kidding me? Oh, no, sir. Uh, that was the name she gave at first. And Mr. Hahn was puzzled, too. Uh, and he laughed and said, let her in. What time was that? About 9.30, sir. What time did that girl leave? Are you conducting this investigation or am I? All right. You ask him. Well? Well, uh, I don't know what time she left, but it was before two o'clock because uh, I found him, at, uh, Mr. Hayne, at that time and, and she wasn't here. <laughs> well, that's what I call deduction. Didn't Mr. Horn ring for you? He may have. I don't know. How come? Uh, I was out. Out where? Do I have to answer that question, sir? If you know what's good for your health. Well, uh, I, uh, I was playing ping pong with the maid next door. Ping pong? Yes, sir. <laughs> I've heard it called everything but ping pong. What does this Mary Smith look like? Uh, I don't know. About five foot two or four, I should say. Uh, she had dark hair and blue eyes and uh, rather pretty, I say. Did she have a brown purse about, uh, oh, about that size? What? Uh, I didn't notice the color, sir. Do you know anything about this Mary Smith? Not a thing, Dan. How did she act? Well, I should say, sir, sort of nervous-like. Sort of nervous-like, eh? Yes, sir. Did you see her with Mr. Horn? Uh, yes, I asked her in. What did Mr. Horn say? Well, if I remember correctly, sir, he said, how do you do, Miss Smith? Hey, hey, Dan, yeah. get a load of this. What? This note. Did you touch it? Oh, don't be a sap. Mary, eh? Well, there's your motive. What? Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? After killing somebody, would you write a note like that? Well, you ain't so dumb, are you? Thanks. Well, I'll be seeing you. Where are you going all of a sudden? I'm going to see a guy. And is he going to be surprised? How can you sit there and say that you were sober when right here in the paper it says that you've been drinking? Now, Dad, be reasonable, be reasonable. How about that black eye? I suppose you got that running into a door, eh? Just because I had a couple of highballs doesn't mean I was in a fight. Hmm. Well, whoever did the job should have finished it. I'm certain, buddy, telling the truth. Robert, this is the end. Crash into print again, and you're on your own. Pardon, sir, but uh, Mr. Scoop Hawkins is here to see you. Well, well tell him I'm out. Tell him I'm in China. Uh, he expected you to say something like that, sir. Only, he mentioned the North Pole. He said it's in regard to Miss Smith. And very important, sir. Now what? Why does he want to see you about this girl? I don't know. Probably trying to stir up a little dirt, I guess. Mm, well, I'll see him and find out what it's all about. There's his liver need stirring up. Well, I'll see him too. Well? What do you want, young man? Where's your son? Is he here? Did he come home last night? Well, of course he came home last night. Oh, there he is. Oh, well, you know him, eh? Know him? <laughs> He's my best friend and severest critic. Shoot. What time did you leave Mary Smith last night? None of your business. Okay, kid. But you'll uh, tell it to the DA's office later. What's that? Sure. He's going to be questioned. What the devil are you talking about? Marco Hahn. Marco Hahn? 
Sure. Well, will you tell me what Mary Smith has got to do with Marco Hahn? You don't know yet? No, what yet? Marco Hahn was murdered last night. And apparently your friend, Mary Smith, was the last person to see him alive. Well, what's all that to do with my son? That's what I'm trying to find out. Is this on the level? It is. Now, what time did you leave Mary Smith? Now listen, if you're mixed up in this, keep out of it until you see my lawyer. Oh, for the love of Pete, Dad, I left her about 8.30. Where? Where she lives, I guess. I don't know. Somewhere in East 55th Street. 320, I think. Not 117 East 42nd Street. Huh? See you later. But hey, Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll... Hey, where are you going? Well, I'm going to find out what this is all about. Oh, keep out of it, do you hear me? Keep out of it from what I can see I'm already in on it. Oh, son, be careful, will you? Yes? Does Mary Smith live here? Mary Smith? Yeah. This is apartment A, isn't it? Yes, but there's no Mary Smith here. Well, that's funny. She promised to meet me here. Oh, when she went out, she Oh, said... then Mary Smith does live here. Oh, no, there's no one here by that name, I tell you. You sure about that? Sure, I'm sure about it. Say, who the dickens are you? We're from the DA's office, and we want to ask a few questions, see? No, I don't, see, and I'm in a hurry. Just a minute there. Mary Smith gave this as her address, and we want a few answers to our questions. Well, what's it all about? You live here alone? No. With whom, then? With my roommate. Joan Wentworth. Wentworth? That sounds familiar. Say, are you two guys by any chance detectives? Show her your badge, Bosco. Now that we're acquainted, where's Miss Wentworth? Out. Out where? Just out. That's all I know. Is she a brunette about five feet four and rather pretty? Yeah, what of it? You expect her back? Why, certainly I expect her back. Lots of mine. Oh. You don't remember me, do you, Miss Wentworth? No, I don't. I saw you in the DA's office the day you visited him after your brother's trial. Yes. You used to live at 117 East 42nd Street. Yes. Why did you have your trunk moved from there six months ago to this address under the name of Mary Smith? I'm Claude Wentworth's sister. I wanted to avoid publicity. Why, Joan, what's wrong? I'm certain I don't know, Blossom. What is wrong? I see you've got an extra addition. Yes. Then you know that Mark O'Horn is dead. I do. You were at his home at 9.30 last night under the name of Mary Smith. Why, I thought you... What's that? What'd you think? I didn't think a thing. I'm sorry, but you'll have to come with us to the DA's office for questioning. Why, you don't think that I... Listen, you big flat foot. When my complimentary friend gets dressed, you can bring her along. Okay, Chief. Get dressed. I'll wait. I'll say you'll wait. Listen, honey, don't let those mugs get you down. I'll be with you. Thanks, Blossom. Am I under arrest? It looks that way. Buck up, honey. All right, I'm ready. Make it snappy, younger. Okay. I'll be seeing you, kid. Hello, Scribe. You're late again. Well, well, well. Great old friend Dan Kearney. Say, you got a picture yourself, Miss Smith? Please don't print my picture. Oh, of course not. That is, not without your consent. Hey, Flatfoot. Yeah? Are you any good at fastening snaps? Sure. Well, do me a favor, will you? Fasten a couple on that dumb pan of yours. Come in. Oh, uh, is Miss Smith in? I'm from the DA's office, son. Who are you? Buddy, uh, Robert Hayes. Oh, I saw you at the police station last night with Mary Smith. Yes. What about it? 
Well, if it isn't Romeo himself. Where's Miss Smith? <laughs> Ask the Palooka, he knows. Come on, buddy. We maybe need you at the DA's office. You can see Miss Smith there. Well, what is she arrested? Well, you could call it that. All right. You go in my car? That's a break. Listen, Flatfoot, you ride next to him. I won't. The wrestler. A wrestler? Yeah, he has a bad case of wandering hands. <laughs> You say Mr. Hans Butler admitted you? Yes. Who let you out? Mr. Hahn did. You saw no one else then? No. How long were you there? About 15 minutes. And if you arrived at half past nine, that would make it to about quarter to ten? Yes. On your way out, did you see anyone? No. Turn in there with Apple? Yeah. Miss Schultz and Robert Hayes are outside, sir. Hayes? How does he fit in here? He was with Miss Winthrop last night. Where did you find him? He arrived in quite a sweat as we were leaving. Mr. Hahn's prosecution of your brother, Claude, sent him to the electric chair. Yes. Do you feel that Mr. Hahn was justified in his prosecution? At the time, the evidence was conclusively against my brother. Does that imply that since then you've changed your mind and you feel that the prosecution was unfair? Mr. Hahn did his duty. At the time, he had no alternative. You're not answering my question. Am I on trial? No, but complete frankness at this time is going to help you. Is this your handwriting? Yes, this is my writing. But where is the rest of the note? The rest of it? This is only a portion of a note I wrote yesterday to Snowy Hoagland. But this is only a portion of the note you say you wrote to Snowy Hoagland? What was the rest of it? Light? No. I beg your pardon? You sons of the idle rich, give me the jitters. Oh, well, well. Good day, my old friend, buddy. Oh, you again, eh? Sure, I had a hunch I'd find you around here. Yeah. You haven't forgotten your manners, have you, kid? Say, I ain't with him. Oh, well, pardon me, lady. Thank you, folks. Ought to be a bit. 89, two columns. Rush it, Oswald. Okay. Say, if you print my picture out... That's what they all say, lady. But my Grecian physiognomy. <laughs> See you in the picture section. Now you can see why I say part of that note has been torn off. The first part. Dear Snowy, your little red payoff book is now in the hands of... has been cut off. leaving Marco Hahn to make it appear that the note was addressed to him. Well, if she sent this note to Snowy Hoagland, his fingerprints should be on it. Ab Jackson, look that over right away. Yes, sir. If what you say is true, why did you write such a note to Snowy Hogan? I arrived in San Francisco two weeks after my brother's execution. Yes. Go on. Among his effects, I discovered something that led me to believe that Snowy Hogan had framed the Jan's murder on him. What was it you found? 
an unfinished letter to me, telling of his activities with Snowy Hoagland. And then what? I managed to meet Hoagland under the assumed name of Mary Smith. We became friends, and I found out bit by bit that my brother had been framed, although what I discovered would never have been considered proof in court of law. With what purpose in mind did you do all this? The facts that would have come to light through the exposure of Hoagland's payoff book would have sent him to the penitentiary. To the chair, perhaps. What did all this to do with your visit to Marco Hahn? Mr. Hahn had taken a definite stand against Gangman. He said if I could secure this evidence, I would be doing him and the community a great service. And it was to place this mythical payoff book in his hand that took you to his home that last evening? Yes. I see. This office knows nothing of any such activity on the part of Mr. Hart. He planned it as an election coup. Ah. And you'd have us believe that there was a secret understanding between you and Mr. Hart, such as you described? There was such an understanding. Despite the fact that he sent your brother to the chair? I've explained that. His regrets were most sincere. No such book as you described was found in Mr. Hart's study. Don't you understand? Snowy Hogan, discovering my note, went to Marco Hans and killed him to recover his book and left that part of the note to incriminate me for having double-crossed him. And it didn't occur to you that Snowy Hogan would call on Mr. Hahn and do that very thing? I thought only of my brother, of the horrible fact that he paid the penalty for another man's crime. Mr. Hahn's prosecution of your brother sent him to the chair and you killed him because of it. That is not so. Have a wait in there. This way, Miss Wentworth. I did not kill Marco Hahn. Wait in the adjoining room, please. I see Miss Blossom Schultz. You telling the truth? Of course I'm telling the truth. It would take an old fossil like you to pick a girl like Jones. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you're talking to the law. I don't care if I'm talking to the keeper of the pearly gate. Joan Wentworth ain't the killing kind. She told you she was going to bed. She lied. She went out. Well, she had a darn good reason if she did. For well, once we agree. I'll see Hayes. Is that all? That's enough. Come in, Mr. Hayes. Thank you. Sit down there. There are prints on it, all right, sir. But only those of Mr. Hahn. We checked the girl, and hers are not on it. We checked Snowy Hoagland, and his are not on it. Let me see that. That's funny, isn't it? You figure it out. Mr. Yeager tells me that you arrived at Miss Wentworth. Where? Miss Smith, as you know her, is Joan Wentworth. Oh, I... You must have had a good reason for calling there. Well, I... I don't mean to be impertinent, but, uh... Just what's wrong with that? Well, naturally, we are curious. Well, I... I knew she was in a jam. Who told you that? Scoop Hawkins told me. Hawkins. Sees all, hears all, knows all. Go on. Well, I wanted to help. How long have you known her? Since last night. Uh, on such short acquaintance, you show a great deal of interest. Well, if you must know the truth, I, uh, I made a complete heel of myself. Fresh with it. Frank admission. What else? She slapped my face. And you got there in a hurry to apologize to her. I had no license to do what I did. I wasn't drunk, but I'd had a few drinks. What time did you leave her? 8.30. If she's in trouble, I'd like to help her. Your lawyer? No, I... I suppose you can account for your movements after leaving her. Can a fellow take an interest in someone without being suspected of murder? Oh, keep your shirt on, buddy. Could I see Miss... Uh, Miss Wentworth? Bring her in.
Come in, Ray. How do you do? Uh, what do you want? I made a fool of myself last night. You admit it? Now look here. You need a lawyer, and I've got one. A humdinger. What has that got to do with me? Oh, I don't blame you for being sore, but this is on the level. I want to help you. I don't need your help. Now don't be a fool. You're in a jam. Don't you call me a fool. Here, but, here. Well, make her see sense. I believe I would if I were you. Any strings tied to your offer? No, there's not. All right. Bring on your lawyer. Now we'll go someplace else, Miss Wentworth. Where? Jail. Brace up. Come on. Is it a nice jail? Well, as far as jail goes, it isn't bad. That's the spirit. This way, miss. Ah, oh, there you are, eh? Okay, Oswald. Uh, thanks, folks. See you in the picture section. Right. I knew it. I, Robert, just a moment. I want to speak to you. What did I tell you? Just look at that. Look at that. Buddy Hayes, son of Stephen Hayes, Wall Street financier implicated in a killing. Fine publicity. And just when I'm trying to swing the biggest deal of my career. That's what you always say, Stephen. Oh, why? Why did you have to get mixed up in a mess like this? I didn't get mixed up in it. Buddy, Stephen. Now, Mother, you keep out of this. But what? What's this girl to you? Why do you have to uh, champion her? I don't know what she is to me, but I'm curious enough to find out. And I'm championing her because she's in a tough spot. Yes, but what will Normie think? What will she say to all this? I don't care what Normie thinks or says. This business of marriage, unite names and fortunes, is a lot of hooey to me. I don't love you. I never did, and I never will. Yeah, sure, but to hear you talk, one would think that you are in love with this... Uh, well, this girl. Well, that could happen too. And now let me tell you, keep out of it. Drop the whole thing or out you go. Okay. I'm out. What? I won't give you a dime. That's great. I'll sell my car and go to work. What? You can count on me, dear. Ruth, you keep out of this. Thanks, Mons. You're a peach. I'll be at the club. The young jackass. When I was his age, I, I, I... You defied your family and eloped with me. Huh? <laughs> I know... Oh, yes. You would remember that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Hello. No, this is the office. Tell the operator to give you the dining room. Come on in, Dan. Hello, Snowy. Sit down, Dan. Sit down. Thanks. I'll have something cold up in a minute. Will you have a smoke? Thanks. Oh, here he is now. Put it right down here. Here, my boy, try that. Here's to the 18th. Where you been keeping yourself, Dan? Oh, just around and about. What's on your mind besides your hat? Seen the papers? Oh, you mean about Han? Uh-huh. Yeah, too bad. He was a square guy. I hope to tell you. 
This Smith girl tells me she's a friend of yours. Was a friend of mine. Yeah? What's the dirt? Oh, she got on my nerves. Explains a lot. She says she swept your payoff book, walked off on you, gave it to Horn and then let you know, and that you probably knocked Horn off getting it back. Well, she had to tell something, and that was about as good as anything, I guess. Yeah. Good cigar, this. Not bad, is it? Say, it'd have been pretty tough if Horn had got a hold of that little book of yours, wouldn't it? You're not kidding me, are you, Dan? Me? You don't think I'd be sap enough to write anything in a book, do you? Men write letters to women. You're telling me? I suppose you've got a good alibi for last night. Surest thing you know. I was playing pinochle here with the boys from 9 o'clock until about... Oh, 2.30? How was that? Not bad. Not rushing away, are you, Dan? The wife's got corned beef and cabbage tonight, and I don't want to miss it. Well, I can't blame you for that. Drop in any time you want to, Dan. Always glad to see you. Hey. And where did you go then? I went to Mr. Holland's house at 9.30, remained there 15 minutes, and left a quarter to 10. Then if you're telling the truth, Snowy Hoagland or some of his men must have killed Hahn. I am telling the truth. All right. You don't have to jump on me. I believe you. Now, now, children. If you want to fight, you'll wait till you get outside. Outside? Do you know any place where Miss Wentworth can hide out? Oh. You mean uh, away from the old haunts? A, a place where they wouldn't expect to find her? Exactly. Wait. yes, I can arrange that. Can you get her out? Of course I can. She hasn't been formally charged with a murder. I'm going to spring her with a habeas corpus writ. What's that? Oh, you should worry. As long as it gets you out. <laughs> Come along, buddy. Let's go. Well, uh... Oh, uh, uh... I'll be along in a minute, uh... Oh, I see. But remember... You are my assistant counsel. Yes, sir. Sit down. What for? Uh, I'd like to talk to you. I'm sorry about last night. Okay, we'll pass that. Tell me something, will you? What? How well did you know this, uh, this Hoagland fellow? Not as well as you think I did. What do you mean? You know what I mean. What difference would it make to you anyway? I don't know what difference it makes, or that it makes any difference at all. Talk cheap. Well, uh, did you like him? Like him? Are you crazy? All right. You didn't like him. I hated him. You surely must have loved your brother. I practically raised him from a baby. For a year after he left home, he wrote me letters every week about how well he was getting along. He was a good kid didn't even drink. Sent me money for a trip to San Francisco. And all the time, Snowy Hoagland was making a hoodlum out of him. A gangster. And then when he wanted an out for himself, he framed a murder on my brother and sent him to the chair. Sure. I just love Snowy Hoagland. Well, I'd be proud to have a sister like you. Oh, I don't know. I've made an awful mess of things. Well, I haven't been an angel myself. 
That makes us two of a kind, doesn't it? Sort of, I guess. We start from scratch. What say? You don't mean that. Now why do you have to say that? What's right for you is wrong for me. Forget it, will you? I can, but you won't. I know what you did, and why you did it. Isn't that enough? Are you trying to convince me that you're broad-minded enough to understand what I've done? Yes. Just that. Men aren't built that way. There you go again. Well, you're not in love with me. Who said I was? Say, what's all the argument about anyway? <laughs> Be hanged if I know. I'll say one thing. When you apologize, you certainly do it in a big way. Shake, pal. I'm sorry about your eye. I'll be back at seven with your bag. Oh, uh... I'll bring Miss Schultz with me, uh, for your protection. Come in. Hello, Craig. Hello. Here, what the... Well, I suppose you got it all figured out. See tomorrow's papers. Are you with this guy? I just noticed he's been following me since I left the DA's office. Daisies won't tell. Um, come on down to Earth. This ain't a nursery. Anything on your mind? You'd be astounded, then. Well, I suppose you still think she's innocent. Yes, I do. Oh, keep the chip off your shoulder. Maybe I do, too. Do you? She tells a good story, but I've heard hundreds of dames tell a straighter story than hers. Now, why do you have to call her a dame? Are you falling for her? Well, stranger things than that have happened. Yeah! I knew a guy that cut off his wooden leg and bled to death. They kill a fella like Horn and let a guy like you live. What are you doing here anyway? Dan, I have a theory. You've got a theory? In an ivory ball like yours? Yeah. It's on a hot summer's day. The dame's sitting in a lone apartment with the fan turned off. Suddenly she goes to the window, looks down on the street, and sees a plumber with a monkey wrench. The plumber goes in, up the steps, way up the steps. The dame hears a knock at the door, goes to the door. And who could be there but the Iceman? And he says Say, to her, I... what do you think this is, a nut house? I've got a theory. Oh, you've got a theory, huh? Learn to be a detective. Travel while you're learning. Earn money. We teach you in ten easy lessons. Well, let's hear your theory. Now, this note. Yeah, she'll have a hard time explaining that. I heard you say that Mr. Hahn's fingerprints were the only ones on it. I did say it. Come on, now, let's have the theory. All right. Now, let's, for the sake of argument, admit that her story is true. All right. Now, Hoagland finds the note, decides to get his book back, and at the same time, even things up with her. He would do that. So he cuts off the top of the note. How'd you find that out? She told me, and my lawyer. Where? In jail. Oh, you found her, did you? <laughs> Just a couple of leaps ahead of you, Hawkshaw. Shut up. What's the rest of your brilliant idea? Just this. Hoagland, handling the note, realized that his fingerprints were on it. So he decided to wash it off with uh, alcohol or something, and in so doing, washed hers off too. Then he went to harm. Killed him. Got his payoff book. Left the note to incriminate her. And there you are. You're not so dumb. What are you going to do? I'm going to run this through. How long will it take? Oh, I don't know. Two or three hours. Will you call me up? Sure. What's your phone number? Chelsea, yeah. Uh... Oh, I'll write it down. Go 
Don't forget and call me, will you? All right, I'll... Blossom. I'm glad you like it, Miss Schultz. Uh, I want you girls to make yourselves completely at home. Say, uh, give me a break, will you? A break for what? I want to talk to her. Without me? Yeah. Uh, check yourself until call for her. Well, where will I go? What will I do? Well, upstairs or downstairs, take the carpet up, put it down, anything but get out of here. Listen, Romeo, have you got a balcony? Sure. You'll love it. Come on. Well, if those bloodhounds find you here, they'll be darn good. Cigarette? No, thank you. I took this place under the name of, uh, John Smith. Why did you have to get rid of Lawson? I wanted to talk to you. Why are you doing all this to me when you know how I feel? How do you feel? Well, you made a bad start. I don't blame you. Are there any strings tied to this? You asked me that once before today. Well, are there? I'll be honest. There may have been. But the idea is gone. I can count on that? Yes. Joan, I... Please don't. I wouldn't believe you. You play. It's been years. You haven't much faith in me, have you? Even though I doubt your motives, I appreciate all that you're doing for me. <laughs> you are a cynic, all right. Just hard to convince. Please believe me, Joan. I'm on the level now. I do believe you, buddy. May I call you Joan? You have already. <laughs> Say, Joan. Yes. Now. I'm not being fresh or anything like that, but... May I kiss you? Do you really want to? Yes, I'd... I'd like to very much. May I? Say, I... Say, will you get out of here? But you don't need to take my head off. been washed all right and alcohol huh then there's no other fingerprints on it I don't know yet I don't take it over to the ultraviolet now then, without going into a lot of detail there are several things which in common contact with paper will cause a chemical reaction The service indications of which may be removed by alcohol or some other solvent, such as quinine, lemon juice, or... Lemon juice? Yeah. Look, if a guy would squeeze a piece of lemon into a drink, then handle a piece of paper, alcohol would remove the oily indication of his fingerprints. But... The citric acid would leave its signature in a chemical reaction. And this ultraviolet ray thing will bring them up? Absolutely. If there are any such a thing, 
is a fingerprint on that. The violet ray will make it visible. Look here. These are Mr. Hahn's prints, which I brought up today. Now watch when I turn on the ultraviolet. You see, gentlemen? Well, I'll think. Here, compare those with these of Snowy Hoagland. They check all right. The phone's ringing. Yeah, I hear it. Hadn't you better answer it? Huh? Uh, well, yeah, I guess I'd better. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's Kearney. Yeah? Bungalow? Are they going to arrest him? Sure I want to go. I'll be there in ten minutes. They found Hoagland's fingerprints on the note. Are you going? Sure I'm going. Buddy, be careful, Hill. Don't go. Please don't go. Uh, oh. I'll be right back. I'll come to the point. I wish I would. I'm getting tired of all this. Your fingerprints are on that note. That's a lie. You see that piece of lemon beside your glass? Well, I ain't blind. Well, lemon acid left your prints which all the alcohol in the world wouldn't wash off. That's a lie. You'll have a heck of a time proving that. It's already proved. All right, Jurger. Come on, Snowy. You've nailed yourself to the cross. Well, I was sort of expecting you to pull something funny. So I'm all shut for you. Your car's in the alley. Okay, boys, thanks. Don't make me laugh. My men are outside, front and rear. They've got their orders. And so have I, ten of them, right here. It's your funeral. Well, so long, Dan. Well, I'll see you in Europe. Hey, you forgot your hat. Exit snowy. Going somewhere? What are you doing here? Sightsee. Okay! Don't you take my picture! You, what do you mean coming in here like this? Listen! Oh, dear! Oh, don't you see what I mean, gal? I don't want my son's future blasted by... Well, uh, by making a mistake that he would regret later. My happiness is not to be considered? Well, if you love him. Think of his happiness. What do you want me to do? Well, here's my check. A certified one. For $10,000. In exchange for your word that you'll never see my son again. You haven't got enough money to buy me that way. But I guess you're right about me. And Buddy. If marrying me will spoil his future. I won't see him again. Good. Oh, yeah? I've got something to say about that. Joan, are your trunks packed? Yes, Blossom is attending to that. Well, we barely got time to catch the boat. Oh, oh uh, Mother, this is Joan. Joan, this is my mother. Say, listen here. Say, you listen to me. Say, you listen to me. What? I walked out on you and I'm still out. And who I marry is my business and nobody else's. Especially yours. Come on, Joan. You're coming, aren't you, Mother? Yes, of course, dear. Here, you. 
Not you. You. Your wedding present. Well? Okay, Oswald. See you in the picture section. <laughs>